I recently learned I got name checked by by me and him. We got a bone to pick with you, Neil. Now, Neil, I'm just going to assume you don't know who I am. I have a good following. I'm not quite as big as you, obviously. But my name is Charlie Solis. I have a degree in physics from Michigan Tech University. And we've got a bone to pick with you. I've been trying to get your attention for a minute now about the erroneous claims you've made about Tesla's wireless transmission system. Let's go through some of this, shall we? Speaking of Tesla and electricity, what did you think about... The people in the Nikola Tesla fan club somehow feel that he got wronged in his life. Everyone is thinking he's got the solution to the future transmission of energy. No, he doesn't. Well, I don't think anyone's saying that. But what he they did, are and his fans do. Let's cut through the noise. Nikola Tesla's wireless energy transmission isn't science fiction. It's misunderstood science fact. But his contributions to electromagnetism are real and recognized in the world of physics. There's a unit of electromagnetism named after him. So don't come crying to me say he was not recognized by my people, okay? Today we're setting the record straight. You can't get more badass than having a unit named after you. And yes, even the dismissals of Tesla's groundbreaking work on wireless energy transmission. He had some ideas that were a little out there on a level where it almost certainly would have not worked. Much of the rest of his work was fringe and unrealized, either for violating known laws of physics or for being simply impractical. That's a bold statement. Electromagnetic energy. You can ask how much energy is in that? Well, not much. Well, of what good is it? You're not going to run a motor with it. Oh, you know what we found? We can use electromagnetic radio waves. We can use radio waves not to transmit energy. That's not the point of it. As your photons get higher and higher energy, yes, you can start doing things with them. You get x-rays and gamma rays, but that's not what Tesla was referring to. He was talking about moving radio waves. This opening thesis is false. There are plenty of examples of this that have escaped your attention. And here's why. Let's not mince words here, Neil. You got it wrong on Tesla's wireless energy transmission system. You can't pack sufficient energy in your radio wave to do anything we need to do mechanically. If you had enough power in radio waves to power a light bulb through the air, are you standing in the way of this? You want to move it through the air and you want to walk around like, no, that's not how that works. But I've heard If you're moving discuss- enough energy through the air to power something that itself could kill you, the energy powering through the, moving through the air could kill you. Tyson also raised concerns about the safety of transmitting energy through the air. However, here's where the disconnect happens. Tyson's dismissal is rooted in a straw man argument. He critiques Tesla's system based on the premise that it relies on radio waves traveling through the air to transmit energy. But that's not what Tesla had in mind at all. Tesla's actual system was designed to send ultra-high voltage alternating currents, UHVAC, into the ground, not through the air. Tesla himself stated that electromagnetic wave energy energy, or as he called them, Hertzian waves, would not transmit through the air effectively, specifically because of the inverse square law, also referred to as dispersion issues. The men who used his magnifying transmitter in such a way, Tesla dubbed the radio men and further mocked their efforts in a well-documented pre-hearing council meeting. So, in essence, Tyson isn't wrong because the physics he proposes is entirely accurate. It's that Tyson is debunking a version of Tesla's system that Tesla himself never proposed. By not accurately representing Tesla's actual system, Tyson inadvertently steers the conversation away from the real science and physics behind it. So Tesla, everyone is thinking he's got the solution to the future transmission of energy. No, he doesn't. Well, I don't think anyone's saying that, but what he they did, are saying, and his fans do. Yes. Contrary to popular misconception, Nikola Tesla's actual wireless transmission system did not rely on transmitting energy through the air using radio waves. Instead, he proposed a system that leveraged the natural conductive properties of the Earth. Tesla's ingenious design sent ultra-high voltage alternating currents into the ground, not radio waves through the air. Tesla's system was grounded by the drive for scientific, practical, and transformative solutions, not in the world of science fiction. His idea was to use the Earth as a giant conductor, with a transmitter sending electrical currents into the globe and a receiver pulling them out elsewhere. Now let's delve into one of Nikola Tesla's lesser understood yet revolutionary ideas, the concept of transmitting electrical power using a single wire without requiring a return circuit. Such a concept stands as a significant cost-saving measure, with the potential to redefine power transmission systems worldwide. We now send energy through wires, because right. you're not standing in the way of the wire. The wire is buried. The wire has insulation. It would have the wire sort of 
residual high effect. suspension. In the late 19th century, the prevailing form of electrical transmission was the direct current DC system. However, the DC system had its limitations, notably its inefficiency in delivering high power over extended distances. Tesla's introduction of alternating current AC systems allowed for the stepping up of voltage and stepping down of current to drastically reduce ohmic loss. This innovation has driven the vast majority of energy transmission since its inception. He proposed using an alternating current generator to push low voltage, high current into a step-up transformer. This would produce high voltage, low current for transmission across wires. The high voltage, low current would then be adjusted via a step-down transformer at the destination, yielding a manageable low voltage, high current output for everyday use. This AC system overcame the barriers of high current related losses intrinsic to the DC systems, enabling power transmission over longer distances with much less energy loss. Yet, traditional AC systems typically require two wires for transmission. Tesla, ever the innovator, deemed the second wire superfluous and a wasteful expense. He endeavored to find a method to transmit power efficiently using only one wire, thereby eliminating the need for a return wire. To go one step further, Tesla's most radical vision was to conceptualize the Earth itself as the single wire for the simultaneous transmission of power and information. The Earth is filled with conductive materials like water and various minerals that facilitate the flow of electrical currents. By utilizing the Earth itself, the entire planet will become an interconnected energy and information network without the limitations posed by traditional infrastructure. Tesla's invention of single wire transmission was a precursor to his ultimate aim, the wireless transmission of energy and information through Earth. Imagine rural areas gaining effortless access to power, or the possibility of transmitting vast amounts of data without the need for extensive and costly infrastructure. By potentially utilizing Earth itself as this single wire, the limitations of distance and infrastructure may become things of the past. It is upon us, the generations that follow, to recognize the brilliance in Tesla's simplified complexity and to realize the untapped potential that it holds. Hear me. Hear this? We the people was not written for the rich or the powerful, but for all the people in order to establish justice and secure the blessings of liberty. Do our day and declare our energy independence. These words, they must apply to everyone or they mean nothing. Do you understand? I fully understand the name Kirk. Nikola Tesla's groundbreaking idea of using a single wire for power transmission is a revolutionary concept, though to be clear up front, this cutting-edge technology is not without its challenges. Challenges like finding the best locations on the globe for the practical application of using the ground as a conductor are still subjects of intense research, yet the potential benefits of Tesla's single wire system are too significant to disregard. Let's dive into a simple yet powerful physics analogy to further grasp this concept. Imagine two balloons filled with air connected by a hose. Each balloon represents a reservoir of electrical charge, and the hose represents the single wire in Tesla's system. When we squeeze one balloon, the air flows through the hose and inflates the other balloon, similar to how electrical charges are conducted from a higher potential to a lower potential. When the squeeze balloon is released, the other balloon starts to discharge the air back through the hose. This back and forth movement of air is akin to the alternating current flow of charges in Tesla's single wire system. This alternating oscillation continues until all energy is dissipated due to factors like the ohmic energy loss in an electrical circuit due to resistance and impedances. But how does this oscillation actually perform work in a practical setting? The oscillation is, in essence, a cyclic movement of potential energy to and from a mechanical system, creating a repetitive action that can be harnessed for the efficient transmission of significant power to perform real actionable work. The upper terminal of Tesla's magnifying transmitter, often seen as a mysterious component, actually plays a significant role in the system's efficiency. Think of it as a large capacitor or a reservoir for electrical charges to be stored into. When the system is activated, charges surge upwards into this terminal, similar to how air fills up a balloon in our previous analogy. Instead of letting these charges dissipate into the atmosphere through arcing or other wasteful processes, the upper terminal conserves them, allowing them to bounce back towards the ground. It's akin to the return discharging of air in our balloon balloon analogy after the enlarged second balloon releases its air back through the hose after the squeezed balloon is released. The charges reverse their course and flow back the way they came, oscillating one completing cycle. This is how the upper terminal acts like a spring in its function as a giant capacitor and charge reservoir. It conserves and recycles the system's potential energy rather than losing it. By eliminating arcing from the upper terminal and reducing electromagnetic radiation, Tesla made a significant leap in the transmitter's efficiency and capability of converting the input energy into electrical energy conducted into the ground. In other words, having an upper terminal that's arcing off into the air would be analogous to the balloons having holes in them. Losing potential energy as the air rushes
rushes out each time the balloons fill up. This dampens the power signal bounced back into the ground. In a similar vein, when the frequency of squeezing the balloons increases, there are eventual losses from the rapid back and forth movement of air surrounding the balloons. The acoustic waves produced by the balloon's surface can be likened to a damping of the power signal. Applying this to Tesla's magnifying transmitter, as the frequency escalates, more oscillating electromagnetic EM energy dissipates into the air from the upper terminal. This results in analogous damping of the input power signal intended for conduction into the ground. Tesla himself even stated that the magnifying transmitter, if so desired, could be designed to emit 95% of the input energy from the upper terminal as EM radiation and direct only 5% as currents into the ground. Though he explicitly claimed this to be the naive struggles of the radio men. You can't pack sufficient energy in your radio wave to do anything we need to do mechanically. Conversely, Tesla explained that his more favorable approach was to design it to emit only 5% of the input as EM radiation and therefore channel the remaining 95% of the input into UHVAC straight into the ground. Serendipitously, this demonstrates the transmitter's dual capability, wireless radio wave communication through the air in addition to non-interference mechanisms for the in-ground power signal transmission and transmitting information frequency bandwidths. This also clears a common misconception that the return for the circuit is through the air. The function of the upper terminal in conserving and discharging the charges back into the ground effectively dispels this notion. This action can be seen as being analogous to an oscillating mass on a spring, but for the electrical charges. The concept of the upper terminal in Tesla's wireless power transmission system can be analogized with the operation of a Helmholtz resonator in acoustics. Just as a Helmholtz resonator, commonly found in automobile muffler systems, interacts with acoustic waves by damping out specific frequencies while allowing others to pass through, Tesla's upper terminal does something analogous. It acts as a reservoir resonator for electrical charges, carefully tuned to respond to certain frequencies. The tuning of Tesla's wireless receiver, specifically the capacitance of the upper terminal and the inductance of the secondary coil is crucial for its proper functioning. These components create a resonant circuit that determines which power signal frequencies will be allowed through and which will be filtered out. Just as in an acoustic system, where the resonator permits only a specific frequency to resonate, in Tesla's design only the electrical frequencies that match the resonant frequency of the receiver's circuit will be allowed to pass through the secondary coil, causing a movement of charges oscillating within the circuit. All other frequencies will be filtered out, effectively preventing them from inducing a current in the secondary coil. The upper terminal and secondary coil's CL resonant circuit must be tuned appropriately to absorb the back and forth movement of the charges at the transmitted frequency so that it minimizes any damping of the wave and hence conserving energy. This conservation is crucial as any deviation from the tuned frequency would result in energy losses. The core of this idea is that unless the receiver is tuned precisely to the transmitting frequency, it won't receive power efficiently. But that's not what Tesla was referring to. He was talking about moving radio waves. So then I, I thought, out of respect for him, what I should do is give him my most informed critical analysis that I can. In my field, you come up with an idea. But that's not what Tesla was referring to. He was talking about moving radio waves. You present it either at a conference or you... Hello. Joe. What's going on, man? Man. To your colleagues. It is their duty to alert you of things about your ideas that are either misguided or wrong. But that's not what Tesla was referring to. He was talking about moving radio waves. That's their job. Not all ideas will turn out to be correct. Most won't be. But his contributions to electromagnetism are real and recognized in the world of physics. He was talking about moving radio waves. But to get to that point, you need to know things like... Contrary to popular misconception, Nikola Tesla's actual wireless transmission system did not rely on transmitting energy through the air using... Feelings here. It's about objective reality. So I don't want to assume anything nefarious, but did you just like not read his papers? In fact, I haven't. This fact undermines your claims and assumptions and conclusions. That's how science works. Everyone is thinking he's got the solution to the future transmission of energy. No, he doesn't. His statement is shown to be false. Just because you do some good stuff doesn't mean everything you ever did is going to be great. What can happen if you're a fan of a subject, let's say, an expert, let's call it, it's possible to know enough about that subject to think you're right, but not enough about that subject to know that you're wrong. He was talking about moving radio waves. To become an expert, you can't just sit in an armchair and say, he was talking about moving radio waves. It requires 
looking through journals. That's what we have learned is the most effective means of establishing that which is objectively true. Nikola Tesla's actual wireless transmission system did not rely on transmitting energy through the air using radio waves. Instead, he proposed a system that leveraged the natural conductive properties of the Earth. I'm going to read you just my opening line here. 